Hi, I'm Julie, Keeper of My Home. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to make bread using fresh milled flour. And I'm going to show you how I ground, grind uh, fresh wheat berries. You get a different taste, fresher taste. Um, it's so delicious. It's airy and the texture is just unlike regular bread from regular flour that's not been freshly milled. So I do buy our wheat berries in bulk and they last much longer, much longer, 30 plus years than your flour that you're buying at the store all ground. That doesn't last very long and actually once you freshly mill your flour, that freshly milled flour only has a lifespan of 30 to 40 days. So the first thing we're going to do is get some wheat berries into my mill. I'm going to show you my mill and explain why I chose this specific mill versus other ones. And then we'll kind of go from there. So let's get started. This is my mock mill 200. Now I purchased this online. Somebody had a discount link that I used. If I can find that, I'll leave it in my description box because they are expensive. This one is just over $400. These are an investment. They do have hand crank grain mills at Lehman's. They have small ones, they have big ones. The big one that I would love to have is $1,000. This was more affordable. And I know it runs by electricity, but I could always use a generator if anything ever went out. So that's what I chose. This comes off and there's a nice big hopper. The hopper will hold two and a half pounds of wheat berries. I'm not sure how much that is in, in cups, but it holds quite a bit. You see here on the side, this you just twist. It goes from fine, number one being the finest, all the way to number 10 being the coarsest. It'll finely mill on this number one for me, and that's, that's the one I keep it on. I'm going to get some wheat berries put into the hopper and we'll grind some of those up and that way you can see what it looks like. I will mute the sound though. <laughs> I'll probably do a voiceover on it because it is quite loud. And I will say too that this grain mill has stone um, stones that grind, okay? Like the old fashioned way back in our ancestors day stone ground, okay? That was important to me because it's crushing the grain just like it did way back when. There are steel blades on some mills and it, it's your choice, whichever one you want. Um, they are a little bit cheaper to buy the ones with the steel blade. I think they're, um, I think the Nutra mill has steel blades if that's something that you want and I think they run around two or three hundred dollars I'm not sure and it is a nice mill there's nothing wrong with it if that's what you can afford and that's what you want to get go for it I guess for me it was important for me to have the stone ground and it it leads to better flavor I like that it was something that our ancestors did. I mean, years ago they stone ground their wheat flour, their wheat berries. So I, me being the history buff that I am, <laughs> I wanted to go with that. The steel blades will grind your flour up, but I'm gonna say that it's not a real grind. It's more of a very fine chop. So um, just pick, just pick whichever one. You can't go wrong with either one because you're still going to get you know, your, your flour milled. Now these are, um, I don't know if you can read this, hard red wheat berries. They are organic. And I did get these from our local Amish community. You can see. These are just a really hard wheat berry. And they're really, really good for bread. If you wanted to make cookies or pastries or anything like that, you would want soft white wheat berries. So there is a difference. I couldn't get into that scientifically because I'm not sure what it is. I just know that one is good for one thing and one is good for the other. I make a lot of bread every week. So um, today we're going to use the hard red wheat berries. <laughs> Thank you. 
There are places online where you can buy your wheat berries. I believe Amazon sells them and also Azure Standard. Uh, there are multiple places, I'm sure, that you can buy them. All you have to do is Google the wheat berries. Now I want to tell you that another wheat berry that I have used is Kamut. It makes a delicious bread. I'm out of that one or I would be making that bread today. <laughs> but you know, like I said, there are so many different kinds. So I would encourage you to experiment because this is something that I want to be fun for you. It's so nutritious. The flour that you buy at the store needs to be able to last a long time so that it can be shipped and stored on shelves. In order to do that, many of the healthier parts of the grain are removed. That is what helps keep the flour longer and spoil less quickly. I want flour with all of the nutrition in it, so I choose fresh milled. We have our flour. That was three cups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out this so you can know exactly what three cups of wheat berries measures out to once it's all ground. Now my lighting isn't perfect in here. It is snowing up a storm. Let me show you outside. Yesterday I was working in the garden. Today we have up to four inches predicted We've had the strangest weather this year. I don't know how strange it's been in your neck of the woods or if it's been just about average, but it's been very strange here. All right, I'm going to use a spoon to help me get this in here. Okay, this is one cup. Two cups. Three cups. Let's get this all. Four and one third cups per three cups of wheat berries. I, I feel like I'm getting more bang for my buck, if that makes sense. Um, and it's fresh ground. It's just so much healthier. I'm not losing the nutrients. When you're grinding your own flour, if you are able to, and I get that this is expensive, it, we saved for it. We put money away every week and just saved up for it. That was the only way we could do it. We didn't have the money on hand right away. But we knew that it was something that we wanted for our family. It was um, something that we felt that it was definitely worth, you know, spending money on it. it. It had enough value to us to be able to do this, to be eating bread from freshly milled flour. That meant a lot. That's why we did it. Now, we are going to make some bread with this flour. I'm going to use my regular recipe. I'm not going to, um, I'm going to change it up a little bit, but just on the flour end. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is to make bread from freshly milled flour. Now, this doesn't take any other skill than it does to make regular bread. It's, it's that easy. This is, this is going to be good. And I know that this is whole wheat and you're probably thinking it's going to taste terrible because it's whole wheat. My family doesn't like whole wheat. Um, my family just, you know, likes regular white bread. You will be amazed at the flavor of this, the texture of this, the light airiness of this bread. And it's so delicious. But anyway, I digress. We're going to get started on this bread. So the first thing we're going to add to my Bosch mixer is a quarter cup of honey. This is some honey that we got from our local Amish community. They're great to um, they're great to get a lot of the things like this from. I'm, I'm glad that we have them. And I'm also going to add a quarter cup of butter. Now this is melted. It can be softened. I've done it both ways. You won't just want to make sure it's really soft and um, it'll mix up well. Clean my spatula off there. And then I'm going to add my yeast. 
Now this is four cups of water. Now the water you want to have um, warm. I usually make sure that it's between 110 and 115. Uh, it's, it feels pretty warm, but it's not too warm. You don't want to go above the 115 because you could kill your yeast and you definitely don't want to go too cold because it will also kill your yeast. So what I've done is I put the water in my dish, then I've added my one and a half tablespoons of yeast and I let that proof just to make sure that it's alive and well. And I'm going to pour all of that in here. You also want to make sure that if you're melting your butter, it's not too hot because you don't want it to kill your yeast. So you have to be mindful of those things. All right, now I'm going to turn this on and just mix this up a little bit. All right, now we're going to start adding our flour. And what I'm going to do is add my whole wheat flour. I'm going to add four cups of this. Now, I do want to say that if you're used to regular white bread and you're switching over to whole wheat, you are going to notice a difference. I like whole wheat. It is a heartier loaf of bread. My husband is very used to white bread and the taste of white bread. So he's not huge on change. But what I do is to get the benefits of the whole wheat and the fresh ground flour, I add a little bit at a time because it's a good way to transition into that without just going from black to white. You're just easing your way into it, you know, kind of dipping your toes in to kind of get a little idea of what it's going to be like. So I usually start by adding half whole wheat flour and half white. That's going to give me a good mix of both and it's going to be a delicious bread. First thing we want to do is we want to mix this whole wheat flour up. So let's turn this on. I'm going to put my guard on. When I get to this point, because all flours absorb liquid differently, I'm going to let this sit 15 to 20 minutes. I'm just going to let it sit here and give it a chance to absorb the uh, water. And whole wheat does make a stickier dough, so you don't uh, want to over add your flour, but you don't want to under add either. So we'll just let it sit for a while and then come back to it and add more flour in a few minutes. All right, we've let this sit for about 15 minutes, so I'm going to start adding my all-purpose flour. When you're making your bread and you're adding your flour, you may add 10 cups one day and the next day it may be 11 cups. It is all dependent on the humidity in your home, the weather. I know I find nice, beautiful, sunny days very different from rainy days, <laughs> very different from snowy days. Today is a snowy day. So um, just add less at first and then slowly add more as you go. Okay, so err on the side of caution. Just add a little bit less, mix it and uh, knead it a little bit. If you're doing it by hand, you'd be able to see even better. And then just kind of gauge it and add a couple tablespoons at a time as you're going along so not to overdo the flour in your bread. I'm going to add four of the all-purpose for right now and see where that goes. Okay, so you did see me add a couple tablespoons more to this and I've stopped it. I've had it um, kneading for uh, about six minutes. I am going to add more flour. So let me show you what this looks like. Okay, let me zoom you in. The dough, I mean, it's, it's very sticky and really you want to do a window pane test where you can kind of see through a little bit without breaking but you can't, it'll, it'll break. So that tells you that it needs more flour. So I'm going to add 
oh, two or three tablespoons more, and then uh, put it on to knead for about three more minutes. All right, I've stopped it. I still can't, still pretty sticky. So I am going to add a little bit more, more like probably a third of a cup. And I think our dough is ready. So I'm going to pull it out of the mixer. This is a beautiful, beautiful dough. I'm going to put this dough into my prepared bowl over here. Let me put it in here. By prepared, I mean it has been lightly oiled or greased. So I'm going to get it a little bit greased, put it in there. We've got it all in there, and I'm going to cover this, and I'm going to set it over on the top of our cook stove and let it rise. Now while my bread is making its, uh, it's doing its first rise, I'm going to get all of this cleaned up. Now you want the bread to rise until it's doubled. It'll take probably an hour and we'll go from there. While the bread is still rising, it just has a few more minutes left on it then I'm going to put it in the pans. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit. I have my little, this is my mock mill uh, booklet. Uh, that came with the mock milk. I just wanted to kind of go over with you. This is not just for wheat berries. You can do more than wheat berries in here. Um, there's a whole list of different things that you can do. There's there's seeds that you can do. You can do chia seeds. You can do the different wheats, the einkorn, the emmer, the spelt, the, you know, all the different ones, the kamut. Um, you can do chickpeas, kidney beans, lentils, uh, corn, barley, long grain rice, pinto beans, quinoa, rye, soya beans, white beans, and the wheat like I did. You can do whole anise, you can do fenugreek seeds, fennel seeds, dried rosemary, coriander seeds, cumin, caraway seeds, cloves, allspice, star anise, uh, pepper, tonka beans, cinnamon flowers, and cinnamon sticks. So you can do so much more with this uh, than just wheat berries. So it is a great asset to have and uh, honestly I'm loving that it does all of these things. <laughs> I'm going to try it out sometime and I'll bring you along when I do. Um, I do want to say I've seen a lot of people say that there's a lot of dust or, or, or flour, you know, that kind of blows up in the air when you're grinding with this mill. That's not the truth. I have never had any trouble with powder being, you know, going all over the place and, and dust getting everywhere. Um, I've never had any issue with that, actually. So it just goes into the bowl. Um, there's no big clouds. Well, you saw. Uh, when I was grinding it. There's no big clouds of uh, dust anywhere. Uh, so if you're thinking about getting one, whether it's a neutral mill, um, a mock mill, uh, there's so many different ones out there. If you're looking for stone ground or steel, um, that's totally up to you. I will say that stones are less apt to need um, maintenance and steel is more apt to need maintenance. Now that's not to say something's gonna happen. Um, it's just it's more likely to happen with the steel blades than it is with the um, stones. Stones are natural. They're not going to um, dull. They're just always going to be stones that grind. And I myself love that aspect. And honestly, when I was looking for a grain mill, that's exactly one of the things that I absolutely had to have. Now, my bread is ready, so let's get that put in the pans. Okay, let's look at this bread. Look at this. So let's pop the dough down. That's the best part. I'm gonna let it go down, and then I'm gonna pull it out onto my board. All right, let's get this divided into three. Let's go one, two, and three. 
I think that middle one is a little bit bigger than I want it to be, but that's okay. I'm gonna roll this up, tuck in my ends, and put this into my pan. And it's going to raise again. Now let's move on to the next one. I am gonna steal a little bit from this, this one to increase this one a little. Let's roll it up. You know, I know that you can make your bread look really nice and beautiful and perfect and soft and smooth, but I'm making bread to eat. Three loaves ready to raise at the cook stove. And as soon as it comes up above the edge of the pan, about a half an inch, that's when I turn my oven on to 375. And once my oven reaches temperature, I put the pans in. I'm gonna cook my bread for 32 minutes. Okay, the biggest takeaway I want you to walk away with after watching this video is that making bread using fresh milled flour is easy. It's not hard. Anybody can do it. You can do it. I love making bread and the best part of making that bread is the fact that I know what I'm putting in it. I'm putting in really great ingredients and when I'm milling my own flour, that's even better. You know, the nutrients are much better and they're, they're there. <laughs> I just want to say that they're there. We don't know how long store-bought flour has sat on the shelf. We don't know when it was milled. Okay, so when I grind this flour, after I grind it, it only has a shelf life of 30 to 40 days. So if I was bagging this up and putting it on my shelf, it's done in 30 to 40 days. It's lost its value. It's lost the nutrients and, you know, all of the nutrition, the good nutrition that you want in your body, you want in your bread for your family. So... Imagine that when you buy the flour off the store shelf, how long has it been there? When was it milled? How many nutrients are you actually getting into your bread when you're making your bread using that flour? It's anyone's guess. So using the milled flour changes that. It adds the nutrients that I want in my bread. It gives it such an amazing flavor, like a real nutty, delicious flavor. I wish you could all come here and just, I'd slice up my bread and serve you all and you could all get a taste of it. It would be wonderful. You could just gather around my table and eat it together as friends. That's what I wish, but we can't. <laughs> so try making some some of this yourself. also want to add that when I bring my wheat berries home in their bag, I usually buy them 50 pounds at a time, that bag, well this winter the bag went outside in the cold weather and I set it out on our ice chest for probably three to five days just to make sure there's no um, bugs or eggs or larvae or anything in there that I don't want in there. It's all killed. You can also put that bag into your freezer if you have enough room in your freezer that will work too but you just want to leave it in there three to five days just to make sure then you want to put it into a five gallon pail with a gamma lid and that gamma lid screws on there it has a seal so that it screws on there tight and in that it will last um 30 plus years i'm it's i mean it'll last that long but doesn't mean mine is gonna last that long because I use it. So, um, so it's gonna go quicker than that, but at least I know it's there and it's not going to go bad before I use it. Okay, you can see, let me pull this down a little bit. Can you see where the bread has risen? I actually got busy and let it go a little bit higher than I usually do, but it is risen enough. So you look over here. I have set the oven to 375. As soon as that goes off, 
I'm going to put the bread in the oven and we're gonna set the timer for 32 minutes and then we're going to have a very nice smelling home and some delicious homemade bread. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's really my passion to pass these things on to you and to pray that you learned something, you gleaned something from this. And if you did, please let me know in the comments below what what was it that um, that you're taking away from this video? What is it that spoke to you the most? I love hearing those things. Um, if there's something else that you want to know, let me know in the comments and I will try to make a video on that as well if I can. Don't forget my newsletter. Subscribe to that and make sure you go over and you confirm your email by going into your email, clicking on the link, just verifying, confirming that you want the newsletter, and then that locks you into having it. If you don't confirm that your email, verify it, you, the newsletter is not gonna happen. So you need to confirm that in your email before you get the newsletter. It comes out every Monday morning, so you can look for it again um, tomorrow. And uh, until next time.